Okay, welcome to part 5 of this series. Um, in this part, we're going to be making a start on the actual private messaging system. Um, so all we've got at the moment is a simple template system and a sort of login system, basically. So there's no register. We're not doing register because um, it'll take too long. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is explaining the database structure and then hopefully making a start on the actual inbox page. Oh well, I suppose the new uh, create conversation page would make the most sense first. Anyway, so let's go to our database, uh, well, phpMyAdmin, and let's create the new tables necessary for the actual private messaging system. So I'm going to click on create table here. Oh, I'm going to log back in. I'm going to click on create table, which I thought already had, but anyway. Um, and then we're going to call this table conversations. Um, so we'll go with that and then delete some of it. Uh, and the first column is going to be conversation ID. The second one is going to be conversation subject. So that's it. All this is going to do, this conversations table, is going to contain a whole list of all of the conversations and their subject. So it's pretty straightforward. And then the other, the other tables are going to contain data relating to which messages are part of which conversation and there's going to be another table, a third table um, which contains data about which users are members of which conversation okay so that's pretty much that so the conversation ID is going to be a length 8 integer as always for IDs, I'm not sure why I go with 8 but it seems sensible um, so I'm going to set this to be a primary index and auto increment for the same reasons as with the users table and the subject is going to be a varchar of length 128, which is just a, quite a long number that nobody will probably go close to. Um, obviously you can add that to your validation later on. So yeah, that's good. So we can just click save and that's that table completed. So then we're going to add another new table, which is going to be called um, conversations members. So no, conversations members. So that's that one. Um, so the columns in this, there are obviously going to be a few more columns. So we're going to have the conversation ID. So that. We're going to have the user ID. So that one. I mean, I need to add two more. So I can do that and click go and it should add two more. Good. So as well as the conversation ID and the user ID, um, we're going to have the, well, okay. So these two columns together indicate which users are part of which conversations because essentially this is just sort of a linking table so this users ID will link to the users ID in the users table and this conversation ID will link to the conversations ID conversation ID in the conversation table um, so this table doesn't actually have a primary key itself um, it's going to have a unique index in a moment but we'll get onto that as we sort of go through um, okay so um, after the conversation ID, we need to store the last time that a user um, has viewed this conversation. And that's what's going to be used to mark the messages as read or unread, or seen as un seen and unseen, if you like. So we're going to add a new field here called conversation last view. Um, yeah, that's it. And then finally, we need to add a sort of flag to indicates whether the user that's specified by this row, so each row represents a user, has deleted this conversation or not. So I'm just going to set this to conversation deleted. Okay, so now we'll go through the types. So conversation ID was the set is going to be the same as it was in this table, so int length 8. And that also goes for the user ID, that's going to be the same as it was in the users table. Because it makes no sense to have these bigger because then, well, you know, it just wouldn't work because this table can't have any more value, so you're just wasting space. Anyway, the last view is going to be a timestamp because that makes the maths a bit easier. So I'm going to set this to length 10, which is how long timestamps are. And the conversation deleted is going to be an int of length 1 because we're only going to be storing 1 or 0 in uh, these uh, columns. Or this column, I should say. Okay, so that's that. What I'm going to do now is just click save like so, and this table has been created, and one more thing we need to do, so I need to just go to this table, and we need to define an index. So what we're going to do is make the user ID and conversation ID unique as a pair. 
So that'll mean that you can have duplicates of the conversation ID and of the user ID separately, but together you can't have the same user ID in the same conversation twice. Um, so it's just sort of a way to back up the validation we're going to do with PHP later on. And also it just caused horrendous complications because people would see the same conversation twice and when they deleted it, it'd delete twice and it'd be very confusing for them. So what we're going to do is create an index on two columns. I'm going to click go. Okay. And this index type is going to be unique. And I'm just going to set its name to unique because I have absolutely no idea what to set its name to. So I just always use unique. Um, and the columns are going to be the conversation ID and the user ID. And I'm just going to click save. And now you see we've created a unique index for this table. So that's that table done. What we do now is create the final table, which is going to be contain the messages which are in the conversations. So this is going to be called conversations messages. And this is going to have quite a few more columns, so I'm going to go ahead and add those now. Um, it's going to have three more in total. Missing for what? what? Oh, okay, I didn't click go, press enter. Right. Um, so inside of this uh, table, the primary sorry, the primary index auto incrementing number is going to be a message ID, which is just going to rep it's going to be uh, just an auto incrementing number as with the user ID, which just represents the you know which, this message essentially. So this is going to be an int of length. Um, well, we'll go with eight, but you should probably have this higher. Let's go with ten because each user is most likely going to send more than one message. Um, I mean, there's, there's sort of ways you, could, you should really be working this out. I tend to just guess, but um, what you need to think about is, say you've got the maximum number of users, will they still be able to use the messaging system? Is what you, I guess you should be thinking about. But anyway, that's so far ahead of this anyway. I mean, you're not going to have that many users. But whatever, that's not what we need to talk about now. Anyway. So the second thing is going to be the conversation ID, which is going to be used to link uh, which uh, well which conversation this message is for, or is part of. The final thing, not the final thing, the next thing, is going to be the user ID, which um, just links which user has posted this message. Uh, the next thing is going to be the message date, which is when the message was posted. Pretty straightforward and then the message text, which is the text of the message. So again, fairly straightforward. So the data types for these other ones, the conversation ID is going to be int of 8, um, the user ID int of 8, by that I mean int of length 8. Um, so again, these are just taken straight from the same, you know, type is kept the same as is in the other tables. The message date is going to be an int of length 10, that's going to be a timestamp. Um, the message text is going to be a text type, and we're not going to set a length for that because text is just. I was going to say infinitely huge, but that's quite an inaccurate claim. It's fairly big. It's probably a bit better. Anyway, all we need to do now is just set the index to primary for the message ID and set AI, which is just short for auto increment. Okay, so then we can click save, and that's all of our tables created. So now what we need to do now is go ahead and start creating the sort of code to use these tables to actually create our private messaging system, sort of, you know, actually make the system. So what we're going to start with is the new conversation page, because that sort of makes the most sense to me, I guess, because we have to have the conversation in the database to test the um, listing and reading page, so we should make the new conversation page first. So what we're going to do is go back to our code and realize that I haven't got the new conversation page open but there is something we need to do to the uh, inbox page first actually and that is we need to add a link to start a new conversation so we've got a page called new conversation um, which you may have seen in the pages folder previously um, Oops. so we're just going to add a link to that page now so a href equals index dot php and page equals new conversation Okay, and the text of this link is just going to be, um, let's go with just a new conversation. Okay, so that's good. We should be able to test that out now, just to make sure it appears right. Oh, obviously I need to log back in. Okay, so there's that link. 
and we just click that we'll just get a blank page because the new conversation page currently has no content um, so on the new conversation page we need to um, add a form to uh, well as I showed you in the demonstration we need to add a form to invite users and all that sort of good stuff so let's go to our folder and look for this page um, actually yeah let's sorry let's go back to our folder and look for this page so core pages new conversation hit display okay so that's this page so on this page what I'm going to do first is just code the form um, so the action is going to be set to oops let's or whatever that said the action is going to be set to oh god I really can't type today ah there is going to be set to an empty string which just means the current page the method is going to be set to post and then inside here we're going to have a couple of divs to represent the various lines of the form so in the first one we're going to have a text input which is going to be who the message is to so input type of text name of to and id of the same um, and that's that. So just above this we can add a label tag which is going to be for the two element and its text is just going to be two because I can't really think of anything and not toe which is what I just typed. Okay so the second element is going to be in a div like so um, and it's going to be another text input which is going to be the subject so input type of text name of subject I've got a new keyboard, I'm not entirely sure I'm used to it yet and the ID is going to be the same that might have been just an excuse and just above this we need to add a label which is going to be for the subject element and its text is going to be just subject Okay. So the final thing we need to add, well, almost final thing, is a text area. So this is slightly different. Text area tag looks like this. Um, it has a name, which we're going to set to body. Um, it doesn't need an ID, because we're not going to give it a label. Um, it just should be sort of obvious that you know, the big area is where you type your message. Um, you need to define the number of rows, which is a bit unnecessary, really, because CSS usually sets the width. Um, but it's invalid code if you don't set the number of rows and columns um, so I've played around with this and I've found that rows of 30 which I'm actually going to change to 20 for this because I've realised I've resized my window quite significantly so I'm going to set this to 20 and a calls of 110 which is almost the width of that 800 pixels uh, but you can style this with CSS as well um, this is just, I'm not sure why it still it's still required, it seems like a bit of a sort of classical thing but anyway, um, and this doesn't close in the same way. You need to close the text area tag like that properly, I guess. Okay, so that's that done. Final thing on the final line, the final yeah row, I guess. We need to just add a submit button. So input uh, type of submit value of send, and we need an equal sign in there. Okay, so let's just check to make sure this looks right by reloading our page. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, so we've got a two box, a subject box, and an obvious message box. You can obviously add a label to this message box if you really want, um, but it would require you to give it an ID, otherwise it'd be invalid. Unless you don't care about it being invalid, then just go for it, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so now what we need to do is... Um, actually, I think I'll leave processing this form to the next part because this is getting a little bit long um, so yeah I'll do that so in the next part what we're going to do is deal with processing this form and we're going to deal with the code to create conversations and oh it's gonna be great <laughs> okay so come back for part six I believe and we'll carry on with this page <laughs>